Check this out. We have a web application on our hands that basically takes user input and saves it into the user input variable. Then it checks the length of the user input and if it exceeds the 100 characters, it basically says, hey, the length is too big. Make sure it stays under 100 characters. Otherwise, it's going to say, this is what you said and this is the length of the string you have provided. Now, would you believe me if I just told you that this is vulnerable to imp validation bypass and this if statement right here is actually flawed and the user can end Enter a string as big as 100,000 characters and this will still work. Well, I guess you're gonna have to find out about that. And maybe if you want to learn hacking and learn how these things work, then check out my course which is down in the description box below. And also, I got some exciting updates for you. We've got merch now, ladies and gentlemen, so if you want to get yourself something fresh, something sleek looking, then check out my link which is in the description down below. So the web application works simple. You basically enter something like test123 you basically hit send and it tells you hey this is what you entered and this is the length of the string that you have entered which is test one two three four and yes the length is eight and if i was to enter a little bit of a longer string for example i copy this and i paste it a bunch of times and hit send it says hey the length is too big make sure that it stays under 100 characters it works simple so let's take a look at the backend code of this web application. The backend is built with JavaScript, as you have seen from the intro. And here is how it goes. First things first, we have the user input stored into the user input variable. And then the user input is checked whether it exceeds the 100 characters. So basically we do user input.length and if it's higher than 100 characters, We'll do, hey, the length is too big, you know, make sure it stays under 100 characters. Otherwise, it basically says, what we have entered and then also displays the length. Now, how in the world would this be vulnerable? Well, there is a neat little trick we, we can do to bypass this input validation and enter a string which is as big as we want it to be and still passes this here validation. I wanna tell you why this is a security flaw. Now, this is just a visual representation of why this will be a flaw. Don't take this for granted. This is just like a my little silly and stupid representation of how and why I think it would be a bad thing. So let's get started. So I'm going to take the first character and feed it into the algorithm. The algorithm is going to do some magic, some math and computation. And obviously, it's, it is a bit of a resource expensive task. And let's say it takes 0.002 seconds to complete this task before it returns us a character, for example, hex C1. So our A got turned into hex C1 with hashing. Then obviously takes B character, feeds it into the algorithm. Algorithm does some magic. Let's say again, takes 0.002 seconds and it prints out B1. I don't know. I'm just throwing examples. And this all in total averages to 0.008 seconds. Again, it's a very small number. Sorry for the A looking a little bit weird. So I hope you're starting to paint a little bit of a better picture. Get it? Because I'm in paint. I don't know why I even had to <laughs> I had to make the, make sure you get that joke, but I'm, I'm sorry. It won't happen again. What if an attacker enters 100,000 characters within a string and it passes through the input validation? What will happen? Let's say this is 100,000 characters long and each character gets passed into the hashing algorithm and then it basically throws us the output. Believe it or not, 100k characters equals to 200 seconds if each character takes 0.002 seconds. Think about it, almost five minutes to complete this. And for those five minutes, everything will be slow and laggy and whatever. And in my opinion, this is a security vulnerability. So bypassing this altogether shouldn't be easy as what I'm about to show you. But hold on, let's take a little step back. Let me explain to you how does even this string length check work. Here is a string, which is test one, two, three, four. And then if I do dot length, you can see the length of that string. And if I just was to update this, obviously the string, you know, the length updates with itself. And then if we hit enter, we basically return an integer, which just displays the number of characters was, that was used within the string. It's very simple. And if we say, higher than 10, it will say that this string is higher than 10 characters. If we say higher than 30, it will say that this is higher than 30. And if we say 50, it's going to say false because this string is not more than 50 characters. But if we keep on adding the characters, eventually we will get it to be true. 
And as seen, it, that's the case. So if this is working flawlessly, how are we going to end up breaking the logic of this web application to bypass this. Just know that string can be checked with dot length. But what else can be checked with dot length apart from the string? Well, obviously numbers can, so numbers can just be checked with length, or maybe they can, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure, but obviously they can't. What about objects? Object dot length, huh, it's weird. So it seems like only strings can be checked. Let's create an object called G and let's check the G's length. It's undefined. Well, that's weird. G dot length is undefined. So it seems like length can only be used on strings. But what if we, within the G, create a property called length and just say, for example, two. So now G dot length is two. But does that mean the length of G is two? Obviously not. The, the, the object G has a couple of more characters than two. But just know that this is known as type confusion, vulnerability within the JavaScript. And PHP and JavaScript tend to mess things around. So just know that JavaScript and PHP are the primary suspects when we talk about type confusion. So let's take a look in what's going on within the burp suit. If I send this request, obviously with the input being test123, it says, hey, this is what you have entered and this is the length of the string that you have entered. But what if we provide an object? I'm just gonna provide an empty object, nothing too special. And as you can see, it will say, this is what you said and the length of it is undefined very odd. But now that we actually explained it, it makes a little bit more sense. Let's say input is a, 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 a. Let's say this is the input. And let's say now we actually do, uh, for instance, uh, length. So length two or three. And if we send this request, we essentially fold the entire backend that the length of this is actually three, which in reality is not. I can copy this and paste it multiple, 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 multiple times and send the request and the length will still be three passing through this input validation right over here. To check the actual length of this entire thing, we can copy it, go back to our console and we can basically encapsulate this entire thing within a string. Hopefully we can do that. Uh, nope, we can't. Why can't we do that? Ah, there we go. So. This entire thing, the length is 646 characters long. So we just entered 646 characters long and it passed through and it told us what we said within the length. So basically this is what we have input and it basically returned us an object. But why is it saying object object? Well, don't worry about it. This is probably just some weird edge casing on JavaScript when it returns it this way. So nothing to worry about there. So what can we take from this video? Just make sure if you are a developer to check the type off before you do anything. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe, stay safe, stay responsible, and as always, peace.